it's gonna be loud. Yes. I know. here by Tristan. We'll be our cannon frying crew for today. So before we get started with trying to load and fire this can, I would ask you please, since there's a lot of people up here, please you down your mask. Stay safe, keep it all uh, situated. Um, thank you very much. Now, also before we get started, I just want to talk to you real quick about the can itself. What exactly it's doing here for Mackinac? Sound good? Yeah. Um, all right. So I love starting with the name of this cannon. It's a beautiful name. It's a Mark 18, 41, 6 pound smoothbore field gun. Everyone say hi, model 1841 Hey. Hi. It's a very long name, isn't it? So, so much so that even the soldier stationed here over 130 years ago would very rarely call it that long title. They're often just going to call it their six pounder. Now, I assure you, they're not weighing six pounds. The barrel long is over 900. So what do you think does weigh six pounds without the gun? Do you get this? Oh, let's get a shot, exactly. This cannon can bob a six pound cast iron cannonball up to a mile away. That's what the edge is around island out there. And at that mile long distance, we can probably hit a tree on Round Island. What tree I couldn't tell you. <laughs> that's not that accurate that range. That is because the smooth board. So inside the barrel, there are no grooves or rice on your side. So there's no twist being put in the ball. So it's really going to go any direction it last bounces. Your more accurate range is more to the half mile mark. Oh, there's that stone break wall out there. So that makes this cannon pretty good for defending the harbor and the village of Mackinac down below, which is really what Fort Mackinac was designed to do. For the later 1700s, early 1800s. But you see, me and Tristan are representing soldiers of the 1880s. And by then, there's absolutely no threat to Fort Mackinac. So the only reason that they'll have this cannon is for ceremonial purposes. They'll be fine with a couple of shot. A little bit of gunpowder with no balls to get a bang off these other things like a firework. And they fire for daily events like the raising and lowering the flag, uh, federal holidays, local events like the Commandant's birthday, or even the first photo tourists after a long winter. Basically, any excuse to find a fire advantage as well. Even back then, fire in the school. That's what you do. That's exactly what you're doing. Here's a shot on our trip here. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to step back here, put this leather thumb patch on my thumb, and cover the touch hole. This is called thumb stalling. I'm not letting any air into the chamber of this can at the possible stroke of embers, making it a lot safer at the business end. Now, Tristan's going to take our first tool, the gunner's blur. Basically, a corkscrew and a stick. He's going to search the beast. He's looking for any debris from the last shot that could be harboring those embers. Now, if he finds anything today, it's going to be some historically inaccurate aluminum foil. <laughs> the reason we use aluminum foil, about it's historically inaccurate, it's a lot safer, it burns up quicker. Historically, you grab your charge of cloth, cloth smolders, and we don't want a lot of smoldering debris in the base of the can. All right, next step, I'll take the wet slob, basically, basically a good wet sponge and stick, and run that down the barrel. Now, this is going to cool the barrel down, clean it out, douse spark, but also, maybe for a slight thunk, we actually created the back to push all the air out of this cannon. So there should be no live sparks at the base of the cannon, so it should be safe to load our charge. All right. Now, as you can imagine, to actually shoot a six-pound cannonball, you probably need a lot of gunpowder, about 20 ounces. That's about the size of a Pringles can of gunpowder. And since you don't need that much for a salute charge in the 1880s, they use about half that, about 10 ounces. Today, I can only use four. You may all say, aw. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, small charge. They say 10 ounces scares the crowd of the horses, it rattles windows, and actually knocks paintings off the walls in our museum. We don't want that, so we can use four. <laughs> it's be loud, though, I promise. <laughs> American War and the Civil War, it's called a friction primer. A little hollow brass tube filled with gunpowder, and the tip is a chemical known as fulminate of mercury. It's very similar to what they put in Kafka. So when you pull a hand through it, it'll create a spark, setting a jet of flames down the tube, igniting your main charge. Oh, ladies, because just 
about Senna is this time I do have to remind you all 